Next is we're, uh, we're going to hear the stories of two successful graduate students at Memorial University. Uh, the first graduate student uh, who is going to give you some advice on graduate life at Memorial is Mrs. Francesca Boschetti, PhD candidate from the Department of English, Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. Please join me welcoming Francesca. Hello everyone, and I'm very happy to be here today to welcome you to your journey at Memorial. I see that we have a good number of international students as always today, so today I will be offering you an international student, student perspective and some tips on how to succeed here at MAN as an international stu a graduate student. So I'm from Italy. That's where I'm from. I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of English in the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. That's the former Faculty of Arts that has just recently changed its name. And I research Canadian immigrant literature. So even if it is called Department of English, it's not really about language, what I deal with, but it is about literature. And um, when I first came here to Memorial, it was to do a master's degree. And um, when I did that, I was in a cohort of eight graduate students. I was one of the eight. And there were only two international students in the cohort. It was me and another student from Oman. But she was already used to the Canadian university system because she had already um, done um, an undergraduate degree here in Canada. So for me, it was a bit of a shock when I first came here. I was not used to the system. In Italy, university is very different. It's not so much about teamwork and presentations and seminars, but even in grad school there, when I was doing my master's in Italy, it was mostly lectures. And it was not really about writing papers, but we would do other projects. So it was a very big change. Also, in class, I found it very different. All my classmates and professors even were talking about North American popular culture. All these references to comics and TV shows and movies and things that I had no idea what they were. Right? So it was a bit of a shock. Also a different language. So I had already studied languages in Italy, so I didn't think that I would really struggle with English while I was here, also because I'm in the Department of English. But you will see that even if you're fluent in English, um, sometimes if you're very stressed or you're very tired, English can become a problem as well. So that's another problem that some international students have. So um, cultural differences were a big part of the shock, as you probably can understand. And during the first week, I was um, really thinking at some point, what am I doing here? There was a little bit of crying, like in the smiley face there. And I think the first week for many international students is the hardest. And, uh, but you will see it gets better. And at the end, you will see that you can succeed. You just need to get used to the environment. Um, and I think uh, talking about this, because we have many Canadian students as well here in the lecture hall. Uh, it's hard sometimes for Canadian students to understand what we go through, so I'm hoping that today, talking about these issues, you will also get the perspective so that you can better understand people in your cohort and issues that maybe you have not considered these international students may have. So where to find help if you're an international student at MAN? About these units, many people before me, many speakers, have already mentioned these, and I'm sure you've talked to the people at the booth um, downstairs. But the ISA office, that's the old name. I think now they've changed it to internationalization office. Uh, that's your go-to destination. If you're an international student and you need advising, they have advisors there as well, okay? So we have different kinds of advisors here at MAN. International Students Advisor, that's one of them. Uh, they can help you with lots of um, areas, so housing, insurance, um, income tax, uh, they basically do it all. If you're an international student, and if you're not sure where to go, you can even just ask them, and they will be able to direct you to the right place. They're very welcoming. Don't ever be scared about asking. Uh, in any unit. If you're not sure, instead of spending five hours just browsing the web, just ask. And people will be very happy to help you. Also, there are many international students associations. You can find a list on the website. I've provided there the link, but you can just do a search through the MAN website and you will find um, uh, easily this list. You can also form an international student association. 
and uh, there are other international students as well that are a very good resource. You will see here people in Canada are very friendly, especially in Newfoundland, but international students are friendly as well. And when you get here, if you're an international student, you might feel more comfortable at the beginning talking to international students because you feel part of a group. So don't be ever scared about stopping a student in the hallway in the corridor and ask them a question because they will be very happy to help you. And if you don't find a helpful person, if they don't want to help you, just go find someone else, okay? That's what I always say because we want to think that people are nice, but not everyone is nice, okay? So don't get discouraged if you find people that make you feel like um, you're not good enough or you don't know where you are, okay? So there are not nice people are there as well, okay? So. Okay, so here I've provided a um, slideshow of pictures to give you a taste of what international life at MAN will be for you, okay? So one of the things that you will do, of course, is to make international friends because it will be easier for you at the beginning probably to mix with international friends. You will be able to attend many cultural events. We mentioned uh, international associations before. There are lots of events that are organized by these associations on campus and off campus, so that's a good chance to learn about other cultures as well. For example, I didn't know much about Indian culture before I came here, but through my Indian friends, I went to an Indian event, and my friend, she even lent me a sari, so I wore the uh, traditional outfit to go to the event, and we learned about cultures, and we had um, quizzes, as you can see from these pictures, and we learned about each other. So that's a very good form of cultural exchange to go to these events as well, and of course, Canadian students are welcome as well to attend. Um, as an international student, you will also want to learn about Canadian culture. So in Italy, we don't have Thanksgiving. Many other international students are not really familiar with this festivity, with these traditions. So um, there is a church here in um, Elizabeth Avenue. They organize every year the traditional Thanksgiving dinner, and it's for free. It's for international students. If you have a family here with you, your family can also come because Thanksgiving, that's about celebrating uh, family as well. So they will give you the traditional meal that will explain to you, the chaplaincy will be there. They will explain to you what Thanksgiving is about. So that's a very good uh, chance for you to learn about Canadian culture. Also, you'll be able to represent international students in Newfoundland. Here it was a couple of years ago, uh, CBC organized um, a chance for international students to participate in the Christmas parade that is downtown every year. So through the internationalization office, the ISA office, they um, sent out um, an email saying that people that were interested in volunteering for this could attend, and I was one of them. Also, we talked a lot about making friends with international students, especially at the beginning, but I would also recommend that you make friends with Canadian people, because they're really nice. Also, um, when I came here, I mentioned earlier that I was a bit shocked by the environment of the university and by the topics that my um, classmates were discussing in class and out of the class, right? Because even when we were having uh, a get-together, they were talking about things, and I was not really sure what they were really talking about. So um, always try to explain to them how you feel if you really are lost and you will see that they're really friendly they're really nice they're welcoming here it was my birthday a few years ago and my Canadian friends from my cohort they organized a bonfire for me at Middle Cove Beach I never had a bonfire before so for me it was new you will have many chances to volunteer this is a picture from the GSU and Town Barbecue of a few years ago. I, w I used to be the uh, vice president of Town, the teaching assistant union, and um, that is a really good union as well to talk to if you're interested in volunteering. But there are many chances to volunteer even in other fields and even in the community. There is the student volunteer bureau office. Um, you can just get involved in many, many ways. There are also many seminars, lectures that are organized, both by the, the faculties, the departments, all the units. Here it was, a, um, we had a speaker, Nella Rio, she's a poet uh, from Latin America, and she came here to Man to give a talk. So there we attended a lecture, but there are also occasions to give talks. Uh, for example, the Aldrich Conference every year, you probably heard about this uh, already today. Uh, that's a very good chance for grad students, and. Um, 
I think also senior undergraduates can send an application to present there as well. And you can talk about your research, a project you've been working on, whether it's your thesis or just a paper from a course that you wrote. And that's a very good chance to get feedback as well because faculty will attend as well and they will provide feedback to you. So conferences, if you're not really comfortable going right away to an international conference abroad or to a conference in another city in Canada, which I recommend you do, but if you're not really comfortable, you can start with the Aldrich Conference that is a local conference or with other conferences that are organized throughout the year. Here you probably recognize uh, Dr. Kachanowski, that's the president, sorry, the president of MAN. And uh, here with Tauman, we uh, um, negotiated the new collective agreement. So we went and had a meeting with the president and we signed the new collective agreement. So if you get involved, you see you volunteer, then you have many opportunities to network and meet people from the university administration and uh, talk about your research as well during these occasions. So that's a really good chance uh, to talk to all these people that we just see in the pictures but we never really get a chance to talk to. Okay, so just a few more tips, and some of these have been already discussed by the other presenters to succeed as a grad student here at MAN, socially, academically, and professionally. So to succeed socially, get involved. We have already mentioned these when we were looking at my pictures and when I was giving you a taste of grad life at MAN. Um, so events, volunteering, and what I recommend, we talked about international friends, Canadian friends, but many people, they also feel comfortable just spending time with people from their own country. This happens in some communities here, especially if your, the community of people from your own country is very strong and well established here. Um, I kind of discourage that because I think that if you just spend time with people from Italy or people from China or people from India, they would, you would just use your native language, you will not meet new people, you will not have this cultural exchange. So I would mix it up a little bit. That's the advice that I would give you. Events, there are international events, there are GSU events here at MAN. Also your department may organize some departmental events or your faculty or the School of Graduate Studies, they organize workshops and events. We have talked about this already. Also the off-campus housing office, they organize events throughout the year. They've had in the past hiking, boat tours, so also keep your eyes open for those. That's also a good chance if you don't have a car, they organize these trips with the bus, everything is organized, you just pay a fee that may be like five, $25, something very cheap. For example, for a boat tour, they would be much more expensive if you go on your own. And you don't have a car, you can just visit um, the surroundings of St. John's this way. And there are also local events that are organized by the city hmm, or by local associations that are not um, strictly linked to the university. So you may also want to do that in your free time. To succeed academically, of course, you need to focus on your studies and have good relationships with different people. Dr. I mentioned this already, right? So it's not just your professors, but your supervisor, your peers, and your family. Hmm? Dr. I talked about this as well. So sometimes we see that, uh, and we know that, well, that grad life is very hard, tends to get very stressful. We have all these mental health issues that people talk about. So you really want to be in a good relationship with your family, have someone to talk to. Okay, if your department is driving you crazy that specific week, you want to vent with someone. You cannot really go to your classmate, right? Because sometimes we're not comfortable talking about someone within the community, about the problems that we have in the community. Also, we want to have an outside perspective sometimes, right? Have a good work-life balance. So I'm sure many people before me have stressed this but it is very hard to have a good work-life balance. Ideally, we would like to keep this, but in practice, that's very challenging. So of course you need to spend enough time because we are here to do our graduate studies in class, in research, studying in the lab, in the library, but it's hard sometimes because we get overwhelmed. If you're stuck, because it is so overwhelming and it gets overwhelming easily, I can tell you, especially during comprehensive exam time, exams time, uh, you really need to seek help. So there are many people you can uh, go to to um, seek help and uh, all these units have been mentioned before. The counseling center, um, not only does it offer, as other speakers have mentioned, personal counseling, but also study skills, seminar, and all these things. Last year, I did my comprehensive exams um, in fall semester, and before that, I was really struggling with the preparation because I had to study 
110 sources. It was a closed book exam, written exam. So it was very challenging to remember everything. So in order to learn some new skills, I actually went to the counseling center and they explained to me how to use mind maps. Hmm? During my previous studies, I had never used mind maps. And there are many softwares that we just don't know they exist, right? Because they're new, but they can tell you about it because that's your job, right? So I recommend that you just go and check out what services they offer and talk to a counselor and maybe they can advise something that works for you. Okay, so ideally we would like it to be 50% work, 50% life, right? And I'm including sleep in the 50% life as well, right? But that's very hard. Sometimes it's just gonna be 90% work and 10% um, life, okay? During those times, just to be strong, stay strong, uh, because it will be over, mm? Okay, so comps will be over, exams will be over, the deadline of that paper will get there. You will have the paper, mm? You will submit it and then you can just get an hour rest, good rest. Um, in order to have really this good life balance, what I recommend personally is that you develop or learn time management skills. Um, what I found very helpful for me here at MAN was to make a schedule at some point and be very flexible with my schedule. So have small goals, big goals, middle size goals, right? And readjust that according to how your preparation is going, how your courses are going, and uh, don't feel bad if you cannot stick to the schedule because the schedule is done um, to help yourself, right? So you do it just to help yourself not to be just a slave of the schedule. And uh, using a planner as well has been very helpful for me. I've tried with all the online tools, but those didn't really work for me, so you might want to try paper. Mm? if that works best for you. Also study techniques. Uh, we talked about study skills, at seminars and workshops and getting advice from supervisors and other classmates, people in your cohort. But what I think is that you really need to find what works for you. So your supervisor may talk to you about some, skill, uh, some study skills, some study techniques that really work for her or for him. And could, this could be the same with a friend of yours that can recommend something to you, but you really need to find something that works for you. So keep trying, keep looking for other techniques if those that have been recommended so far to you are not really working, hmm? because we're all different. Um, and also what I found really helpful was a reward system, especially during my comps. Uh, to keep, that's to keep yourself motivated, right? So when you have 110 sources to read, that's a lot of work, right? So for example, you finish 50 sources, just get take a weekend off. A weekend, hmm? not a week. <laughs> uh, so do something like that, okay? And I have also some small rewards. I don't know, you finish the literature review for a paper, go out for a coffee with your friend, okay? Take a break, something like that. In order to succeed professionally, I would recommend that you really take advantage of all the resources and opportunities that we, we have here at MAN. I know that our schedule is already pretty tight and it's overwhelming. We see emails and we want to do everything, okay? There are tons of workshops we want to attend each and every one of them. It's good to pr prioritize when you see all these opportunities, but it is really good to get involved in these as well. So workshops, lectures, seminars, that will really allow you to become one of the leaders, right? And be successful. Uh, for example, I've been here for a while now and I had never um, attended any of those online MyTex workshops that you will see advertised in the Edge newsletter. I've done this this year, so I've just completed one on developing in your personal network, and I'm doing one on time management, okay? So you can also do that next semester if you're too busy this semester, but try to um, be updated on what's going on. And there are so many opportunities for professional development, the edge, memorial events, mm, career fairs. This is the beginning of your degree, so you might not want to go to the career fair tomorrow, mm, but be aware that there are there, and they are good opportunities for networking as well, mm, to meet people, so maybe later on in the year you might want to go there, not because you're looking for a job for now, but because you want to meet people in the field. Mm and see what the recruiters want, really, and have a conversation with them. So as an international student, I do realize that it's um, very challenging mm, because I've been experiencing that. And sometimes you just feel homesick and or demotivated because mm, life is tough. And uh, so when you feel like that, remember that it will get better. And you should just focus on the positive sides of your experience when you feel like that. That will help you a little bit, I think. Um, what are these positive sides? We're here to learn about our field of study, to become experts hmm? about a specific topic in the field. We, we can learn about a new culture 
If everything is new, that's a really good learning opportunity as well for you. We're, we can make friends, we can make new experiences that we would not have been able to make in our home countries, and we can even practice another language. I remember when I was a teenager, I would go and spend the summer abroad and do language courses, and I would pay for them, hmm? pretty high fees even. But here, we just get two things at once, hmm? because we're doing our uh, degree in another language, well, not all international students, of course, right? Because we have people also whose native language is English. But a good percentage of the international student here, English is not their native language, right? So we get a chance to better our English as well. Hmm? We can practice English 24 hours a day. And we can go to the writing center if we need um, help about style. We can talk uh, about these issues with our supervisor. So you will be able to find help with the language as well. So thank you for coming today. I hope this was helpful, and I'll just leave the presentation to Josh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>